What you guys, we're taking a look at the all-new 4-bay hybrid NAS from TerraMaster. This is the perfect storage device for everyone. The model number is F4424 Max, and we're going to take a look at it. So inside the box, this is everything you're going to get. An Ethernet cable, you're going to get some screws, some stickers, and also your user manual and quick start guide. Also, you're going to get your power adapter and also your power plug here to plug into the adapter. This will be for your country. The power adapter is 120 watts, uh, 12 volts, 10 amps. As you can see, the DC output on that particular power brick. So let's take a look at the actual unit itself. This is the main uh, NAS we're looking at here, four bay NAS. So plenty of room for storage and upgrades later on down the line. We do have the LED lights here and the activity light there as well on the front. So I'll show you how to put these in and set this up a little bit later on in a video. So stick to the end. The maximum storage on this is 88 terabytes. That's 22 uh, terabytes times four. Capacity may vary depending on what RAID type you use on this particular machine. On the side, we've got some ventilation and their logo. On the other side, we have the same thing, some ventilation and their logo. On the back, this is where the main uh, gubbins are so let's take a look at it we've got that huge uh, cooling fan here so noise levels is 50 percent lower than its previous generation in operation we've got also our power input our type c we have two usb free ports and we have two 10 gigabit ethernet ports on here as well and that hdmi port and the power button on the back end of this nas so you can have up to 20 gigabytes of lightning fast throughput uh, with those two 10 gigabit ethernet ports there it has an impressive throughput performance with the linear write speeds up to 2090 mbs also an exceptional 4k random uh, read and write speeds reaching up to 400 mbs this outstanding performance ensures smooth image and video read and write capabilities on this particular device so this is going to be a formidable 4k video decoding powerhouse with capability of UPnP and also DLNA protocols on this particular uh, NAS. So let's take a look on the bottom here. We've got some ventilation and anti-slip rubber feet on here. I'll show you how to gain access to it a little bit later on, but let's have take a look at the specifications. So the CPU in here is an i5-1235U. That is a whopping 10 cores and 12 threads, which is going to give you a max boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. Now the system memory in here is eight gigabytes of DDR5 non-ECC uh, sodium memory. It comes pre-installed with a memory module of eight gigabytes of DDR5. Uh, you can upgrade this to a total of 64 gigabytes of DDR5 as well. I'll show you that a little bit later on. We also have two M.2 2280 NVMe slots in here, and I'll show you those right now. Let me just get the screwdriver and undo these two screws. All you need to do to gain easy access to this to do upgrades or even some sort of maintenance, you just undo these two screws right here, and then you would slide the unit uh, forward, and this will then allow you to take the side panel off here. So let me quickly uh, do this right here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll now remove these, put them to one side, move it onto its side and then just slide it forward and it should come off like so. And there we can now gain access to the M.2 slots here and also the memory. So if you wanted to upgrade the memory, it does have eight gigabytes in here on a single channel here, but you can put up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 in here. And again, if you want to populate these two right here, you could do as well. And these are going to give you uh, super fast speeds because these are Gen 4. I'm loving this new black design that uh, TerraMaster have going on, the black uh, PCB board here and also the black unit. I do like the black look rather than the uh, silver. If you look on this side here, you will see there's a little small USB drive here. I think that's the OS on here or something to do with the actual runnings of this uh, NAS as well. So I've seen videos online where you can uh, hack this and put true NAS and other versions of operating system if you don't want to use the TerraMaster uh, T06 on this version here which is their latest release uh, you'd have to check with uh, TerraMaster whether you can actually change the operating system on this or whether that voids your warranty and things like that if you're into that sort of thing anyway let's go ahead and populate uh, the drive base here so like I said 88 terabytes of 22 times 4 
and that's going to give you plenty of storage and again you can always expand this a little bit more as well um, down the line you do have those usb ports and type c port on the back here which is going to allow also external storage here if you wanted to add more to it as well i'm just going to pop these in uh screwless here and if you are going to be using a uh, small 2.5 inch ssds in here which it will uh, except you will need to use the screws that come in the kit as well just press these on the side right here and they clip into position and once we got those clipped in uh, they should have these anti-vibration uh, rubbers on them to stop the vibration of the drives and you should be good to go once we get these in we'll get this uh, started up and we'll get the operating system on here and i'll show you around the operating system once you've got the drive in all we need to do is slide it back in just make sure it's lined up here and they're fully pushed in and then all you need to do is just push it back into the actual unit itself and it should click into position here very simple and uh, once you've got this done and again you can buy drives uh, that suit your budget as long as you're using NAS drives and also uh, you can upgrade the sizes as you go and give yourself more storage as and when you need to the unit doesn't come with any drive so you will have to purchase the unit itself and then purchase the drive separately and that's where the cost comes in depending on the size of drives that you're going to be populating in this NAS itself would determine how much the whole uh, thing's going to cost. So it's flexible and gives you secure storage space. You can share, sync and manage all your files on the go. You can use photo management, is made easy with your NAS. Also home media servers, home security surveillance, data protection through backups on this NAS it does everything you need to do you don't have to use it for just one thing so I've got the uh, power brick plugged in and I've got the Ethernet cable plugged in here we're going to power it up and we're going to head over to the TerraMaster site here if you want to learn how to install this properly as well there is their website they've got their support page here and all you need to do is put in the actual model that you have right here like I'm showing you here put your email address in here click start and it will run you through the process and it will show you exactly what to do. So it's pretty straightforward and easy to do. The TerraMaster takes care of the installation really for you. But you can see here, there is some information about the actual unit here. It tells you about what types of drives uh, that are recommended with this particular unit. There's also an installation video right here as well, which you can follow if you wanted to, if you've never done it. Again, once you get to this page here, you'll see the uh, tnas.local. Once you click on this, it should initialize and start the setup process. Once you click on it, it will load and it will look something like this. And it will give you the disk compatibility list right here. You want to make sure you're using compatible disks with this particular unit. And once you've uh, got those, you can click start. And that will start the installation process of their operating system. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Automatic initialization is about to start and then it will start loading a bunch of stuff here. And then it's going to warn you about erasing the data on the drive. So if you have data on that drive, now is the time to stop because it will erase all the data on them drives. And it will then start to get it ready for the TOS system that they use. So I've speeded this process up. And once it gets to this stage, the NAS will beep a few times, shut down and restart. And once it restarts, you will get to zero here and automatically load the page to here. If it doesn't, you can always go back to that main uh, location and it should start. So once you've accepted their terms and conditions here, you can give the device a name and set up your username and password. And once you're good to go here, you can click next. And this is just setting up your account for your NAS. This is the super user detail. So make sure that you're using a strong secure password here. It's going to ask you a security email question right here. You can skip this part or you can put your email address in here and hopefully they send you a code and you can then get to the next step. If you skip it, you'll get to this window right here and you'll be ready to go. You can take a little tour of what the operating system is. This is their brand new TOS 6. All the volume and drive needs to be synchronized. So basically the volume will start to be synchronized. Now you'll see it populate. Here we go. And it's using the uh, BTRFS. And you can see I've only got a couple of small drives in here for testing purposes. We do have a storage pool here. 
that needs to be sorted afterwards. So you can see here that's working on that as well. And that's also uh, synchronizing. And that may take a bit of time. So be patient, depending on how many drives you've got and the size of the drives. It may take a, a while. So just don't turn it off. Just leave it running in the background and it will work away and get your NAS ready for use. Now, there is a security advisor here, and this will give you some uh, things to do here. You can click on these, and it will take you to an area where you can configure these and get these all set up. The ones in green are perfectly fine, but once you see here, it will say configure now. But just let the NAS synchronize itself and get ready for use, and then you can go through and make sure you do all of these uh, to get the NAS nice and secure. You can see it says in risk and you can just configure here. It's that simple. And that will be inside the top part here. You'll be able to go there and it will be the security advisor. So up the top, you can see we went to security advisor and that's listed there now. But go to file manager here and this will give you access to the actual file manager. And from the file manager, you'll be able to, uh, it, you can see here, it's asking us to do a backup, but we're not going to do that just yet. But this is your all your applications, your file manager, backup, your control panel, and all your other apps that you want to go into to use your NAS. As you can see here, and let me just go back in here again. And uh, it's going to keep asking that question to say, do not rem uh, keep reminding me. And uh, let me just go back in here and just put the check mark in here. There we go. And click confirm. So once that's done, uh, you should be able to go through here and set up your users and your shares that you want to do. And you'll be able to then uh, do a backup of your system if you wanted to. And you've also got some other stuff here. The backups on here are pretty decent. And this is a good way of backing up all your phone, your computers, and you can store them on here and you can have them synced as well to back up in the background and all your photos and data like movies and stuff like that will be stored away safely on your NAS. Now, the initial layout for a NAS is quite a lot of money, but it's a really good investment. And you can see here's your control panel for your user, user groups, shared folders, and stuff like that. So if you wanted to come in here, and there's your security with a padlock there to go into your security advisor. This is all listed in here. It's very simple. It's very much like an operating system, and that's what you're looking at right here, uh, where you could just use it like a normal Windows operating system. This is just their TOS 6. And from here, you've got all your recommended apps. And these are their recommended stuff. And there's some good stuff on here for photos and Plex and things like that. Then you can go all apps. And they also have the community apps as well, which is another area where you can enable this feature and go to the community center here. And it will show you tons of apps, literally tons of apps that are being used on the Terramaster NAS. And you can see this is the Terramaster community place. And there is literally hundreds and hundreds of apps on here, which you can use. Some are really useful stuff. So make sure you read all the information here about it. You've got Home Assistant there and a bunch of other good stuff. There's loads more there as well. There's pages of them and uh, you can use those and take a good look at what they have to offer. Now, you've also got Docker on here as well, uh, which is quite useful and, uh, You've got a bunch of other stuff that you can do on your NAS, whether you want to set it up for a surveillance system. Uh, there's the Docker Manager right here, and you've got your support right next to that support and help as well. Now, this version of NAS, the F4424 Max, uh, offers a powerful CPU and memory combo uh, with a performance improvement of over 220% over other previous generations of NASes that uh, TerraMaster have released. So it's a really decent NAS. It's uh, got everything you're going to need in a NAS. And I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And let me know if you want to see any more videos on this sort of stuff. And I'll be happy to make those videos for you. If you want to see certain topics on this NAS, let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to make it for you. Anyway, but that's it. I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three, I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.